Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to do Unit 5, Lesson 4. And I know that this purple right here is a little bit blurry. I'll zoom in in just a minute. But today we're talking about standard form, which, which is what we really did most of in our last lesson. And today we're going to compare that to vertex form. So if you'll take a notice at what each form tells us, we can see that vertex form gives us a lot more direct information just by looking at it. But at the very least, they both give us the A value tells us if the function is going to go up or down, whether it's uh, if it's negative, it goes down. If it's positive, it goes up. And if the number is um, greater than one, it's going to get skinnier and go up further. And if it's less than one, it's going to kind of get wider, okay, and go out more. Um, so at least they both give us that same bit of information, okay? Um, standard form also directly gives us the y-intercept, which is nice, but vertex form directly gives us the vertex, okay, which is really nice too. Um, the axis of symmetry is uh, here. We can find it using this formula. Here, it's just the x value of the vertex. So in this case, we call these h and k, okay, the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. Um, and this also shows us how translations have happened from the function, the parent function, to the new function. So let's just remember our parent function. We discussed it slightly in our first lesson uh, or our previous lesson. So um, this is just sort of a reminder of what I just said about the A values, okay? Um, and then this is what the parent function looks like. If I was going to write this parent function in vertex form, here's what it would look like, okay? Vertex form of the parent function would look like y equals 1, parenthesis, x plus 0 squared plus 0. So these two equations are exactly the same. This one is currently in standard form. This is what it would look like in vertex form. So notice that my vertex is at 0, 0. Okay? The A value in both cases is 1. So when the A value um, equals 1, then it's exactly the same um, as the parent function looks as far as being wide or skinny. Okay? Um, and then just also note, yeah, if it's negative, it goes down. That is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, let's take a look <clears throat> more specifically at the translations from the parent function, okay, to whatever other functions that we have. So we want to look at A, H, and K. The A value tells us everything that we just discussed over here. The H value is the horizontal shift. Whenever we come out of these parentheses, we're going to need to change the value or the, the sign of the H value, okay? Um, and I'll show you that in our first example. And then K is our vertical shift. So this tells me how much it moves left and right. This tells me how much it's going to move up and down from the parent function right here. Alrighty. So looking at this first example, um, the A value is 1, and so this is going to go up, okay? The H value is 2. It's 2. 
negative h equals 2. So I would divide both of these by negative 1 to move the 2 or the negative value over to the 2. So this is going to be a horizontal shift to the left 2. All right. And then my k value is a positive 1. And this is going to be a vertical shift of up 1. So let's go ahead and graph this. So my vertex is located at negative 2, comma 1. Left 2, up 1. And that's where my new vertex is. Okay, <clears throat> and then my A value. So I'm going to go right one, up one. Let me go ahead and create my axis of symmetry so that I can reflect my point over the axis of symmetry, which will be right here. And then connect this with a nice little curve to the best of your ability. And that is how we do it. So our axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 2. Okay. Excellent job. Let's go ahead and why don't you pause the video and give example two a try. See if you're able to figure out the A, the H, and the K. Tell me what the vertex is and tell me what the axis of symmetry is. All right, welcome back. Um, so I went ahead and, okay, my A value is a negative 2, which means it's going to go down, okay? Um, the H value, I needed to change the sign, is a positive 1, so it will have a horizontal shift of positive 1. And then the Y or K value will be positive 3. So here's my vertex, 1, 3. That's the vertex, okay? My axis of symmetry is at X equals 1. And so here's how I use this A value. From the axis of symmetry, I knew that I needed to go down because it was negative, okay? So what I did was I went over one and down two, over one and down two. And then I'm gonna do my best to connect these with a curve, okay? All right, so hopefully we were able to get through example number two on our own. It's not that difficult. It's really, it's really pretty easy. Okay, sometimes we don't want to work in standard or in vertex form. Sometimes we want to go from vertex back to standard form. So here's my notes. All that we have to do is multiply it out and then simplify it and then combine the like terms. So let's see how this looks. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is this is a binomial squared. So let's go ahead and multiply this binomial out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this using the distributive property. So x times x. 1x and 1x gives me 2x's, 1 times 1 is 1. Then I'm going to bring down everything else. Okay, now here's the problem here. This negative 3 was outside of a parenthesis, so I need to make sure that I keep that parenthesis around there, that's going to help me know that I need to distribute this negative 3 value into the parentheses everywhere. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 3x squared, negative 6x, negative 3, and bring down my plus 2. Okay. Uh, that's just a mark out. Sorry, I wrote 12 on accident. 
So here's what I've got, and now I'm ready to combine these like terms. Negative 3 plus 2 is just negative 1. So here's my final answer. Negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 1. Okay. So between these two forms, between these two forms, Notice that the a value is the same for both of them. I can currently, from looking at two forms, I can tell you that the vertex is at negative 1, 2. I can tell you that the y-intercept down here is at negative 1. Uh, 0, negative 1. Okay, um, and I could tell you that we're going to be going down. Okay, the A value is a negative 3. So if I were to graph this, I have enough information to do this really easily. Okay, so negative 1 up to my y-intercept is at 0, negative 1, and I'm going down by 3. So watch this. 1, 2, 3 over 1. And this would be the other point. And ta-da! You can graph this super easy of all the information that you need here. Okay, so this was just sort of a extra practice, okay? Alrighty, but this is really what our goal was, was just to translate this to standard form. Um, there's no other examples going from vertex to standard form because the process is the same, all right? Now, going from standard form back to vertex form, that's a little bit more complex. So we do have quite a few different methods that I'm going to teach you here about that. In fact, there's three of them. So we can do it by graphing. We can do it by um, standard form to vertex form by finding the vertex, which is kind of what we did in our last unit. And then finally, I'm going to teach you something brand new, um, converting it by completing the square. This is brand new, but I think that this is a little easier um, when you kind of figure out the system of how to do it, okay? So let's go through these three examples. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to need to do is to identify what I can identify from this equation that I'm looking at here, okay? So the A value is 1 half or 0.5. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down. I figured that part out. Um, the y-intercept is at 0, 0,2 or 0, negative 2. Okay. Now the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Um, well, if I were to graph this, let's take a look at this picture. Where is the vertex in this picture? Okay. Um, it is right here. So this is at positive 2 down 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2, negative 4. All right. And my axis of symmetry is right at this line, positive 2. Okay. So now we can go fill in this information. The vertex is at 2, comma, negative 4. The axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. So we filled in everything. Now we're ready to go ahead and write this in vertex form. So let's bring over, I've got my 2 comma negative 4, and I know the a value. So this is, um, a is 1 half, negative h is 2, and k is negative 4. So let's remember how we, we put all this in. We're going to have y equals 
one half parenthesis squared. And there's an X in the front here. So when I put this into the parentheses, remember to change the sign of the two, negative two. And then the K value stays the same. And that's my vertex form, okay? So if it helps you, this negative K equals two, if you want to do this, um, whoops, there you go, negative H equals two, and you can just divide both sides by negative one to get that H by itself, and it makes your value be negative two, okay? So this is just sort of a, if you need to work it out to help yourself understand, you can do it this way, okay? So that's pretty easy, but you have to be able to graph it first and look at the graph. Let's take a look at example five. Um, I'm gonna try to keep these notes here. Okay, uh, standard form to vertex form by finding the vertex. So first things first, let's identify the A value. So A equals negative three. Okay, now we need to find um, the H, okay, the vertex um, or the X, okay, remember, this is the X value of your vertex. So X equals negative B divided by two times A. So let's go ahead and plug in our A and our B. This is A, this is B, and don't forget to keep their signs with them, okay? So uh, negative six, so since I have two negatives, I'm going to put this in parentheses. And then negative three. And then we're just going to go ahead and simplify that. So I have a positive six divided by a negative six, which will give me negative one. Negative one. Okay, now we're ready to find the K value. The K value. Um, which is also the y, okay, the y value of your vertex. So let's take our whole function and plug this negative one into it, just like we did in our last lesson, okay? So f of x equals negative three x squared minus 6x minus 1. I'm just leaving parentheses everywhere that there is an x so I can plug in the negative 1. And now we're ready to simplify this, okay? So I've got a negative 1 squared. I'll bring down the negative 3. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6 bring down the negative one. So this will be negative three plus six is positive three. Three minus one is two. Okay, so the y or the k, however you want to think about it, equals two. And so now we're going to use our a, our negative h, and our k to plug everything into the vertex form. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Here's my vertex form. f of x equals a, okay, negative h goes here. positive k goes here. So here's my form, my vertex form. So let's just start plugging everything in. My a is a negative 3. My negative h, that just helps me remember I got to change this sign, so that should be a positive one when I put it in the parentheses. And then this y or k value is 2, so it, and it's positive. We keep it the same. So positive two. 
and that's it. That is my vertex form by the same method we used in our last lesson. Alexa, stop. All right, let's do example six, which is going to be a brand new method, okay? So let's see. The first thing that we're going to do is factor the A value out of the first two terms, okay? Factor the A value out of the first two terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So the A value is 2. And so what I have as leftovers is x squared minus 4 x okay now I'm gonna leave some extra space and then I'm gonna bring down the plus 9 okay it's important to leave this little space here and we'll see why in a minute um, so we did this the a value is 2 okay second we're gonna find our new B value the new B, which is right here, um, we're going to divide it by 2 and then multiply it by 2. So I've highlighted or underlined my B in red. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do it out to the left. Well, I'll just do it right here. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And then what I do, I do it in two steps. And now I'm going to bring this negative 2 down and square it, and I get a 4. So I do that kind of in two different steps because the negative 2 is something that I'm going to use in a minute, and then the 4 is something I'm going to use right now. Okay? So what I want to do is so let's look at this add the new number inside the parentheses so i'm going to take this four i'm going to take this four and i'm going to add it inside the parentheses okay um and then on the outside of the parentheses i'm going to subtract it and multiply by a let me explain why really fast. If I distribute this 2 in, 2 times 4 will give me 8. So what I've just done is I have added 8 to my equation. I can't simply add to an equation and keep it equal on both sides. Let me just remind you, we do have two sides. Okay. I can't just go ahead and add 8 to a side. I need to also subtract that 8 from both sides. And let me just separate my work here. Okay? So what I did was 2 times 4 is 8, and that's what I subtracted outside the parentheses. And that's going to keep it... Um, equivalent to what it was in the beginning okay it's okay if i add eight and then subtract eight because that's the same as adding zero now here's how i'm going to use the first number so i'm going to go ahead and bring down this two i am going to bring this down it's about to be simplified and then nine minus eight is a plus one Okay, so I'm going to factor this inside here, except I don't really have to think too hard about factoring it. This negative 2 is a part of that factor. Okay, negative 2, and then just bring down the x. So that's why I do this in two steps, because that negative 2 tells me what to put inside the parentheses. This 4 tells me what to add. Okay, and then subtract. 
on that side. And then I'm done. This is the answer. Okay, so if we, um, if we practice this quite a bit, you don't even really have to write this part out. You can kind of do it in your head. And it just, this is a really quick process once you, um, once you get accustomed to it, okay? All right, let's do our example seven and eight really, really quick, and then we're done with this lesson. Which of the following functions translate the graph of the parent function uh, vertically up six units? Vertically six units, that's the key. So the vertical shift is the K value, is the K value. The K value is on the outside and we do not change the signs. So the K value is on the outside of the parentheses right there. So I know the answer is six because it's gonna go up six units. Um, this right here, if it had said um, horizontally six units, this would be my solution. This would be a horizontal shift. Okay. Alrighty. So um, just pay attention to the words vertical or horizontal. If it's vertical, it's outside of a parenthesis. If it's horizontal, it's inside a parenthesis, and we need to take the opposite number. Okay. All right, last one. All right. Um, the graph of the function g is a parabola with a vertex located at 5 comma 9. So my h value I'm looking for is a negative 5. The k value I'm looking for is a positive 9 because that's the vertex. So let's narrow it down right there. Negative 5, positive 9. Negative 5, positive 9. So just based on the vertex, I can mark out options B and D. All right. Now this tells me that the parabola also passes through the point 3, comma 1. It's also going to pass through a specific point. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug this three, plug this in, okay? Um, and so I'm going to do that to both of these functions. So this should equal one if I plug in a three for the x value, okay? So let's see if it works. I'm going to kind of just do some mental math. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 plus 9 is 17. Does that equal the 1 that we're, we were expecting it to equal? And the answer is no. So it can't be A, okay? Let's try C. Again, I, I find it easier to do mental math. If you need to write it all down and work it out, you can. So I'm going to plug a 3 in right here. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 gives me a negative 8. Negative 8 plus 9 equals one and that's what I needed it to equal so this one works out and that's my final answer all right so that's our lesson for today um, the trickiest and newest thing that you're learning is kind of right here but I also want you to remember to refer to all of these notes up here Okay, I'm sorry this purple was a little bit too dark to see well. I'm not sure how it would look if you were printing in black and white, but um, let me know if you printed in black and white and I need to adjust these colors and I will. 
All right, kiddos. Um, well, that's our lesson for today. Be sure to complete your practice and I'll see you next time.